Joining us today on How I Got My Start in Finance is Larry McDonald, a best-selling author and the founder of The Bear Traps Report. In this interview with Real Vision CEO Ral Powell, McDonald shares how he fought to find a place in the industry and how he made his big break. Well, I grew up on Cape Cod, and uh, but, but just before that, it was up toward uh, outside of Boston, Bolton, Massachusetts, and very tough divorce. And I went through as a child, my parents. I think we were in probably six or seven schools for in eight years, and uh, then finally. Uh, you know, we went from very countryside living to living in a housing project uh, through the divorces. And as a young man, I really learned uh, how to appreciate money, hard work, and uh, finally made it, it made it into UMass. Kind of came up through the boot, bootstraps, uh, public school systems, and started off uh, my career that way. And uh, it's it's been very challenging, but I. Uh, Got, got our first break uh, year, years later, which we can get into. Yeah, you told me about this <laughs> off camera earlier. So, you, so you, you graduate and then you want to go to Wall Street. I want to get into Wall Street and um, I think I had 155 no's from every yeah, single... Yeah, I was there too. <laughs> yeah, we talked about I've got a drawer still <laughs> drawer full of them. The and I, the, I the motivation, uh, and to me, you know, life is about... Um, really that burning desire to break through those walls. I mean, nothing's given to you and you, you have to go get it and you have to really uh, have that burning desire vision every day. And um, I couldn't figure out a way, but there's always a way. If you can't get through the door, you got to climb in through the back window. And uh, Doyle Bronson used to say. And um, I tried to get into Merrill Lynch after like the seventh no, I snuck my way in dressed as a pizza delivery man. Yeah, to the, for real? Uh, yeah, in Philadelphia. I, I mean, Boston, I, I'd struck out so many times, so I tried Philly. And uh, I was thrown out of the building. On the way out, one of the senior producers of the firm, uh, Gary Begno, grabbed me and, uh, and brought me back. And he said, he brought me into a room with five or six big producers. And they said, uh, Larry, we'll give you a job. Just you got to go sell something for six months. Prove that you can build relationships with people. And I'm like, what, what am I going to sell? And the guy said, pork chops. And so I went back to the Cape and uh, Massachusetts, five, six months, put up some decent numbers. And uh, next thing you know, they gave me a job. Selling pork chops. <laughs> selling pork chops. But how did you start selling pork chops? I just worked my way into one of these, I think it was American frozen foods. <laughs> and it was during the uh, SNL crisis. And right. We're talking about uh, trying to get a job in finance coming out of school with Hundreds, and Bank of New England went out of business. I mean, Bank of, Bank of Boston was on the verge of filing. So the whole area yeah. of New England was going, you know, really near depression. Yeah. And, um, and so I just made my way uh, through the back door. So then after Merrill, so where did your career go from there? I was on the retail side for a couple of years and uh, really always wanted to be into, into that major league. To me, uh, to me, I wanted to get into New York and, and work on the institutional side of the business. So yeah. that, and that just fascinated me. Uh, and um, I had a, my good friend, Steve Seafeld. Uh, he, he and I were talking about a vision for bringing convertible bonds to the web. And this is like in the mid-90s. And we started a website called convertbond.com. We were lucky enough to have CNBC do a couple of segments on us. So it was very early for websites. And yeah, it was, of... it was late 95, 6. Yeah, just, or that was just the early construction of it. Yep. But by the time we sold it to Morgan Stanley, it's October of 99. And uh, if we had waited, we sold the company. This was the largest, most successful convertible bond research, potentially trading platform in, in the world. And Morgan Stanley bought us in October of 99. And I, uh, I often say, if we if we had waited for the next bid, we never would have gotten it, because the market collapsed in 2000. And uh, God bless Morgan Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, top tick in the market because yeah. it had a dot com at the end of it. Yeah. So after that, so after you sell convertiblebond.com, what happens? Well, I stayed there. It was a very nice quality of life. I'm in Connecticut, New York, running the convertible sales. I'm running the, really the website for. Morgan Stanley probably stayed there one or two extra years. It was very comfortable, but uh, always wanted to make it onto the trading side. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, that was really the, where I wanted to be. And um, once again, you know, if you have to, if you can't get through the front door, you're going to come in through the back door. 
and, or the window. And um, I convinced Larry McCarthy and uh, the team at Lehman to give me a job uh, trading convertible bonds, high yield bonds, distressed bonds. So I made uh, that was my big break, making it from kind of a on the on the sales side, research side into trading, and that was probably the biggest break of my career. Okay, and so. What kind of convertible bonds? So you're in that you're now in New York trading. What you know? What kind of strategies are you looking at? Well, it's really distressed converts, high yield converts, because what we realize is that businesses on you when you work on a big bank, you have the equity division, and you have got the fixed income division, and most people don't realize that a lot of these divisions don't like each other, and so there's a lot of mis back then there's a lot of miscommunication between divisions across the street, and so my job was to really work with both sides and uh, help bring uh, markets, bring convertible bond markets to uh, clients around the world, but also make sure that our teams on all the different floors and high yield distressed and equities were on the same vision. So explain to people, because some people won't understand what a convert bond is, because yeah. you know it, it's the hybrid nature. And when you're doing distressed convert yeah. convertible bonds, you've got multiple hybrids here. So explain to people what that is. Well, I, I say in the book, and uh, I, I ended up. I wrote the New York Times bestseller about Lehman. It's now uh, it's now published in twelve languages, and one of the parts of the book is about converts. And there's a convertible indicator. If if you look throughout the history of corporate capital markets and financing, the repeat entries to the convertible markets are oftentimes uh, the most likely companies to file bankruptcy, uh, whether it be Six Flags or. Fannie and Freddie, uh, there's so many different companies, WorldCom, Adelphia, the multiple convertible issuer, it's really the last saloon. So a convertible bond is uh, a obligation of the company. So you sell the bond, maybe a five or 10 year bond, a thousand face bond, and it may be a five year term, but you also have a conversion ratio, a certain amount of shares of stock. And what happens throughout the, 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 the evolution of some companies is they get too much in debt. Uh, companies like Calpine. Calpine had seven convertible bonds before they filed bankruptcy. And um, they will come to, it's really what we call the, the last saloon, that bar at two o'clock in the morning when you have to get that last drink. It's the place where a lot of companies can go and finance. And uh, lo and behold, Guess who the new multiple issuer is in, in, in the markets? It's now looking like a, the Tesla. <laughs> oh, right, interesting. So let, again, sorry, just to explain a bit about convertible bonds. So yep. as you say, it's a bond, but it has an equity component. How does that work? Just so people can understand truly how it so, works. So you have a thousand face bond, and there's a certain bond floor, bond floor in there, potentially, because it's an obligation of the company. But you'll have a certain number of shares of stock that the bond converts into. So if, if the stock takes off, you can have a $1,000 bond go to three or four or 5,000. In the, in the dot-com era, um, there were convertible bonds that went from 1,000 face. So you have a, a bond that's 1,000, it matures in five years at 1,000, but you have a potential of turning that 1,000 face into five or 10,000. Because, because there's of, a call option on the equity. Yeah, call option, that's, that's a good way of putting it. It's a certain amount of shares, but essentially it's an embedded call. And it has a strike price, like a call. Yes, it has a strike price. Of which you convert. You can and, convert and, it and if you're Buffett, you, ne you negotiate the very <laughs> low strike prices. <laughs> Buffett's famous for converts. I mean, he convinced Goldman and uh, General Electric right. during the financial crisis to structure him a con private convertible bond that he has between him. It's, a, it's, a, it's an obligation between him and the company. He loans the company money. But he wanted that income component, that coupon, uh, yeah, that's your income, but uh, you also have a low, in his case, he negotiated a low conversion price. So let's just say the stock is $80, or uh, he might, his convert might convert at say 85 or 86. Um, but in the, in the case of other converts that are issued, a lot of times there's a bigger spread. So, so it's, it's like, when does that bond get in the money is the question, when can he convert? And Buffett's yeah. the classic in that regard. Whether it be disguising himself as a pizza delivery man or selling pork to prove his chops, Larry McDonald is the definition of hustle. His perseverance and penchant for climbing through the back window has served him well. For Real Vision, I'm Justine Underhill.